Hi everyone, Darren here, and we've got an alternator rebuild for today's project. This particular unit is the A115 45 amp version of the Lucas alternator, and I received this one in a pile of parts. Now, I don't know what's wrong with it, but I'm going to go ahead and take it apart and give everything a clean, probably restore these aluminum surfaces, maybe give this the, uh, the straighter a, a bit of a paint job. But um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do today is, is take this apart and, and go through it. Now, I do have on order a rebuild kit for this uh, this alternator, so I do have new parts coming. But I'm going to go ahead and check the components anyway. So that's uh, that's the purpose of the video today, and I'm um, just showing you the backside here. This is the this is the alternator where it's got the two wide spades and then the smaller uh, warning lamp spade connector here. Um, this here is a noise suppression capacitor, so some of them have them, some of them don't, but uh, anyway, yeah. Follow along while I take it apart and test all the parts out and see what happened to this thing. Let's get the back off first. Like I said, I, I don't know exactly what's what's wrong with this alternator. I got it in a pile of parts. Um, rather than testing it, I figured I would just start by taking it completely apart. A nice layer of grunge in there. Well, so far I don't see anything that's burned. Um, there's just some compound on these contacts here, but uh, at least that's encouraging. Um, you know, the windings here are at least connected solidly. So I guess I'll get the multimeter out and set it up to uh, set the multimeter here to diode. So inside here, there's three diodes in each one of these um, posted areas here. There's three. One for each uh, layer. So <clears throat> there are three layers. There's the ground layer, this intermediary layer, and then the upper layer, which is the warning lamp. And this being one of the windings in the alternator, it power comes up through here into this ring. Um, there's a diode right there, and it flows out to the warning light. And then there are two more here, here and here. And one of them goes into this middle layer, the other one goes all the way to the bottom. So there's three here, three here, and three here. So I need to test uh, basically nine diodes in order to verify whether or not this rectifier circuit is good or not. So to do that, we've got to get our multimeter set up and set it on, let's see. Yeah, I've got it set on the uh, diode function here, so it will beep when there's continuity across everything. Now, when you're testing diodes, at least with these, you'll typically see about a half a volt uh, coming through the diode. So, for instance, uh, I'll start with these top ones here for the uh, warning lamp. Um, if we connect it like this, the ground post here, Power here, you see nothing, but because it's a diode, it's directional. So if I provide the you know positive terminal for the multimeter to the power post from the winding, you'll see I get a half a volt there, which means that diode is good because it, it didn't provide current in the reverse direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and check these other two. Nothing there. That one's good. And then this one here. Yep, okay, so at least this top layer has, these three diodes are still in good condition. Uh, let's go ahead and check the, uh, the next layer. So the next layer would be from, <clears throat> from these posts here down to the first layer of the rectifier. The second layer is the ground. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave my positive post from the multimeter here and then come down here. Okay, so 4.72. So that means that this diode here, which goes down to the, the board, is good on this one. Let's go ahead and check this one. Yep, same thing. And our third winding. Yep, same thing. Okay. So that tells me that the second layer of, of diodes are good. And then the final layer, which would be the ground layer down here. Again, this this bottom layer, which will be the this diode here. Nothing. 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 And that means that they are good on this particular route because we're actually checking against ground and not the um, battery supply. So these should be a reverse protection. You notice I reversed the contact. When I reverse the uh, pin orientation, you'll see that I do get half volt there, half volt there, and half volt there. So I've now tested all all the diodes, and they're all showing um, perfect functionality. So to me, this rectifier circuit is is in good shape. So either the problem lies in the regulator, or perhaps in the slip ring and brushes. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that apart next. Let's see what the brushes look like. There's one. Yeah, the brushes have quite a bit of material left on them. <clears throat> Let's find out what the slip rings look like. So the brushes I was looking at were here. You can see they're still, you know, they're still fairly long. Still quite a bit of material left in that. Um, the slip ring. So these are the two slip rings that the brushes spin on. This, uh, this lower one is very heavily grooved. Upper one, not so bad. So I could probably use a set of slip rings here. Um, also, I've noticed that uh, this is a there's a bit of grease. It looks like maybe this bearing might be, might have failed or going bad. Looks like all the grease has sort of warped its way out. Now let me see. What does this feel like when I spin it? Eh, it's a bit noisy. Yeah. So that that probably is bad right there. That bearing. Um. So. So far, like I said, rectifier seems good. These were serviceable. Um, but I'll probably replace these. So the problem may just be in this voltage regulator here, which I'll need to test um, with some special equipment. I can't do it with just the multimeter. But uh, I'm going to keep taking this apart and um, see if there's any other faults. Now, to get this rectifier circuit out, I do need to unsolder the three wires that are connected to the circuit before I can remove this and separate the bodies. So I'll go ahead and fire up the soldering iron and take care of that. Well, I've now got all the uh, windings unsoldered from the rectifier pack, so I can just simply remove this. The um, These bolts here were, were pretty difficult to get out because of the corrosion, as you can see, all the galvanic and what not corrosion going on. Um, the Lucas 3RU. Looks like it was dated 1984, week 33. So a fairly new alternator. So now I just need to get these other three bolts out and then I can separate these two halves. Now there is um, some soldering that needs to happen here, or I should say desoldering to get the two uh, slip rings to come off. There's a wire here for one of the slip rings and then the second one is on the opposing side here.
So those need to be removed before I can separate the two halves, but I gotta get these bolts out first. I'm assuming these are gonna be really difficult to get apart because these are these are really hard as well. Well, these slip rings were uh, were on here pretty solidly. I couldn't just prize them off, so I'm having to use this small puller I have. Um, the uh, you see right here, my fingers. See the little wire? They need to be unsoldered before you can remove these slip rings. But uh, yeah, it's kind of a fiddly little operation where you have to melt the solder and pull the slip ring off at the same time. Anyway, that's how I'm getting this one off. Maybe there's a better way, but I don't know it. Well, I've got all the uh, slip rings removed. As you can see, there's two wires here. Either side of the motor shaft. And uh, when I remove it, I need to make sure that they slide in their little groove that's been cut into the motor shaft. Hey, anyway, that was a fun little uh, fun little project. You have to heat up the slip ring while pulling it off to get it to slide smoothly and not yank these wires out. So just be careful and use lots of lots of heat with the soldering iron. Well, that was fun. Finally got the uh, inner cover off, and uh, yeah, this bearing is is just not good. So now that I got it all apart, uh, we need to make sure that the these wires are continuous, as in there's no breaks. So I've got my multimeter set to check resistance, and I'll just go ahead and check these inner wires. They show continuity. So, therefore, the inner, inner wires are good. And all these outer wires are wired together as well. So, you should be able to check between the yellows, any of the yellows or the red, and they show good. So, electrically, all this is in good shape. So, what I'm going to do next is take, take the pulley and the fan off to get this outer housing off so I can get to the bearing in here and then everything gets cleaned. Well that certainly was a battle. Here's the inner ring. Um, the bearing, the front bearing here, held in by this little spring clip and uh, yeah, here's the main main windings. This is just one continuous piece of wire, which is why you need to do a resistance check to make sure that it's not broken. Yeah. Anyway, all the stuff, get a good clean. This is going to go through the vapor blasting cabinet, and I'll get some new bearings in here. Uh, this is going to do some, some paint. So yeah, this should look pretty good next time you see it. So what I have here is a test assembly designed to check to see if this voltage regulator is working, at least in terms of input voltage and cutoff point. So what I have here is a benchtop power supply, and I'm able to control the voltage and the current output. And I have uh, the ground going to the ground wire here, the power supply coming into this yellow, and then the case is the ground. And I have the test lamp hooked up between the power input and the ground. And that'll tell me um, exactly when this voltage regulator con controls the uh, output voltage. So the voltage regulator is designed to control voltage up to 14 and a half volts and then cut out at that point. So hopefully when I apply voltage to this unit up to 14 and a half volts, the light will be on. And then as soon as I go above it, it should kick off again or on and off, depending on what the, the output is doing. And I want to thank AC Dodd for helping me set up this little test rig here. He explained how all this works, and so I was able to do the test. But what I'm going to do is just increase the voltage now and demonstrate it working. So the bulbs come on around, you know, four and a half volts. And I want to go fairly slowly through the, the voltage here. Okay, we're at 13 and a half. And there we go. 
the light kicked out around 14.4 volts. And if the voltage increases, the light still stays off. But as soon as it comes back down, the light comes back on again. And um, this says that this is this regulator, this old regulator, is working. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back in. And um, we'll see what the final output is of this alternator uh, with the load tests on it and everything. But so far, that's, this seems to be working as designed. So I've got some new parts here, and um, just to be safe, I did order a new regulator, new old stock here, and um, here's what that old slip ring looked like, pretty badly worn. By comparison, here's what a here's what a new one would look like. So yeah, I got new new slip rings at a minimum, and then I did get a set of bearings to go with it, since the uh, at least one of those bearings seemed to be shot, and I'm gonna go ahead and replace both with two brand new sealed type. Um, the Lucas bearings, they're, they're not a sealed type. They have exposed uh, ball bearing cages with that, that metal sort of washer that covers everything. Um, kind of a crappy design, so I'm going to go ahead and use these, these more modern sealed, sealed type. But so far, uh, I, this is the only thing I really found that was bad was the, the bearings and this, um, this one slip ring. So once I get it all cleaned up, reassembled, and um, back on an engine, I can go ahead and do a load test and see what the the alternator will actually put out as far as amperage is concerned and um, hopefully hopefully it's just a case where the bearings went bad and someone just put this alternator into a pile because I certainly haven't found anything really terribly wrong with it yet but who knows that's what the testing is for so if you guys found this video helpful or interesting let me know in the comments below um, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video now as part one so part two will be the reassembly of all the cleaned and painted parts along with the final testing. So stay tuned for that. And um, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in another video.